Hey guys, Richard at Reese.com and today we're going to check out one of the hottest store in Orlando, Top Shelf Aquatic. Let's go. This video is long overdue. First, as I have said previously on store tour videos, I truly believe that the local fish stores are the backbone of this industry and without them, we as hobbyists will suffer quite a bit as they are a direct connection to our animals, dry goods, and help for emergencies that we may run into during our journey of reef keeping. I have been extremely vocal to anyone that will listen to help local fish store owners to get the business to thrive and spotlight those that truly deserves it. With that said, I have known Stephen Bayes, one of the owners of Top Shelf Aquatics for well over 10 years, well before he was the part of Top Shelf and he actually has won an award from me for having one of the most outstanding boots in Reefapalooza shows. He definitely knows his corals, cares for the animals, and loves to set himself apart. Just overall a great guy. Now he has been asking me to come and check out his store for a few years now and I couldn't make it out there until now. With that said, let's check out one of the hottest local fish stores in the country. Let's go. Upon entering the store, you're greeted with the rows of corals in the front dry goods on the right, fish system on the left. Store is extremely clean, well kept and organized. What really impressed me though was the sheer amount of friendly and knowledgeable employees that really knew what they were talking about. To me, it says a lot about their organization as a whole. With that said, let's check out these selections of corals while we are here. I am really enjoying what I'm looking at. One thing that I absolutely love was this TSA logo encrusted with corals. This is a very neat idea. I actually have a skull octopus with the same concept. However, I think I'm going to get my aficionado A logo in my tank and have it encrusted as well. Now anyone who has a lead on this, let me know in the comment section down below. Now the fish system, like the coral system, was very clean. They had a great selection of fish and what surprised me was the number of captive breast species that they offer from various organizations like ORA, IOTA, and many others. I love the fact that they dedicated a space for these animals and educating the public on the importance of these animals. Now we have a treat for you. I was also given a tour to the back of their farm. So let's go check that out. Now the farm is massive, a lot bigger than their storefront. Kevin, one of the other owners of the store, I can see that not only he is the master aquascaper with the bonsai-esque rock works, but he's a bit of a MacGyver. You see his touches on everything. You can see the system that he put together for culturing algae. Check out this spinning dragon breath algae. Having it spun like this constantly, no one spot will be dried out and perish. They will continue to grow and fill out the space that they were given. Look at this Bergia and Nudie's farm systems. And what really was neat was that they also had a quarantine system for cleanup crews. And I was impressed how seriously they took on their level of biosecurity. It was also fascinating to see how everything worked and figuring out its intentions behind these designs. Taking a quick look around the farm, I see that all the corals were eliminated by so many different light sources. From what I was told, some do better in different settings, some were illuminated by radions, while certain coral species were illuminated by the combination of meta highlights and radions, while some hybrid setups of T5s and radions were also present. I respect that they were trying to provide whatever that is necessary to these corals to thrive and grow rapidly in their systems. It also looked like they had immense amount of flow provided by Ecotech Vortex. I also noticed some CJ pumps in there as well. And they also equip all these systems on huge UV sterilizers and look like they supplement the calcium and alkalinity by using doses for two parts, calcium reactors, and calcwasser reactors to supplement everything. And they were all controlled by Neptune Systems APEC controllers. And TSA had a controller board for the farm systems and honestly I was very impressed by how nice they laid everything out. Check out these rows of phytoplankton they're culturing in the house. Tedious amount of work. 
I love the fact that they take the time and the effort to culture and feed these to their animals in their systems. Now look at these multi-tier systems. They have fully utilized every space available for farming corals. Look at these corals in the racks that are growing on the walls. These corals placed and growing on top of the PVC pipes. And look at the bottom sump where they are growing and farming different strains of popular bubble tip anemones, macroalgae, and many more. I have only seen this type of efficiencies in Meckley's place in ACI aquaculture. Heck, this place is more efficient in their space. There, I said it. Nothing against Meckley's or ACI aquaculture. They know I have nothing but love for them, but this place is really out of this world. Being a stickhead, I really loved seeing the variety of acros everywhere. What really impressed me was that there were so many old school OG corals that was there. So many shops are busy chasing the latest trends, but looks like the guys at TSA didn't forget the history of the hobby and kept those OG corals to release in a sustainable aquaculture way by farming them. I also absolutely love seeing Kevin's collection of grafted corals as it is something that I'm really fascinated with as well. Look at this grafted Satosa coral. Once again, it's an OG coral that many people look over for the fancy name corals, but I absolutely love things like this. It's cheap, it's colorful, and it's absolutely stunning. Hopefully one day, people will pay more attention to these beautiful corals once again and have the corals in their tank for the love and the beauty of the animal and not just because of what they're worth in the market. Also, check out this massive torch coral colony that is originally from a coral that spawned from their system which settled and grown so that it could be farmed to be fragged constantly to be released and sold to the public and commercial levels. If that's not neat or sustainable, I don't know what is. Look at these massive colonies of corals here. Look at the Duncan corals. This huge bubble coral that is large enough to have its own enclosure. They are doing so many things that is right here. Overall, my experience at TSA has been overwhelmingly positive and I was extremely impressed with all the selections of the animals, how they were cared for and how much attention give to raise these animals and finally providing a warm, clean, friendly environment for us hobbyists, for us to shop and to learn. Alright guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you guys liked the video and found the video informational. If you guys haven't checked out the TSA's website, be sure to do so. They offer a variety of animals as well as dry goods and they offer tons of sales throughout the year. And I'm pretty sure you will be happy with whatever you decide to pick up from there. Thank you for watching guys. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.